Hello, Tracy from Salem here, coming again to talk about my April uh, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery Challenge, April Block, um, background quilt, focal point cottage. <clears throat> so I've been working on this co crazy quilt all month <laughs> long. A uh, huge, massive, steep learning curve. Um, so many things I wish had gone differently, um, but that's okay because that is how I learn, right? By not doing what I would have preferred. I figure out what I would have preferred and then next time I can do it differently. So I still have work to do on the quilt because a traditional crazy quilt, every one of these lines would have stitching on it. So I still have stitching to do. Um, and I think figured before I did any more, I really needed to put my cottage down so that I, there might be spots where I wasn't, didn't need to do any stitching or shouldn't do any stitching. Um, so yesterday I put the cottage down. Um, so the idea is, the, um, is like a fairy cottage kind of idea, right? So the, the, um, plant life, the thistle and the mushrooms and the ferns are almost bigger than the tiny little, um, fairy cottage. That was the idea. Um, and I think probably not all the things on this drawing will happen uh, because they're just too fiddly. Like the ferns basically, if I if I were to try to cut out an applique, something like that, it would just be so fiddly. Or if I try to um, embroider them, um, it, it's going to be really hard because of the qu quilt that I've created. So First of all, there's been so much fiddly stuff on here. I can't, I kind of, I'm at my, <laughs> I'm at my um, breaking point. I'm kind of at my breaking point with this whole project because it, it has been so, such a huge learning curve and so much to do. And um, yeah, I'm a little bit, uh, I would like my April back. I would, <laughs> I would like to be able to do something else this month besides one thing. But um, the learning has been massive, so it's been super helpful. Uh, but I'm kind of at my, the end of fiddly things, um, even though I know there's plenty more fiddly stuff to happen here. Uh, but also the problem is, is how dense this thing is at this point, right? So it's, it's, um, you know, various velvets or, um, um, upholstery, uh, some of this is sari silk, and so it's not too dense, but most of it is velvets and upholstery, which are really densely woven to begin with. Then they're on a backing of muslin, then there is the uh, batting, then there's the page, because uh, I, I use linen for all the pages of the book. Uh, so at this point, it is really hard to stitch through this thing. My thumbs are not happy, the pads of my fingers are really sore. Um, so, um, so yeah, so I think that these ferns, probably not going to happen, not going to happen. So today what I'm doing, so yesterday I put on my, my cottage, um, and I think that there's still some, like, I, I think maybe, I don't know, does it need outlining? Something isn't quite working out for me personally with this roof. Like it doesn't quite look finished to me somehow, but I don't know why or what to do. So for now, I'm just going to leave it. Um, maybe it just feels like it's disappearing a little bit into the quilts. I'm not exactly sure. But for now, I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to work on my, um, on the, on the plant life. So, you know, like this, this drawing kind of begs for like all kinds of little flowers here. It kind of begs for all kinds of like embroidery flowered things coming off the roof, tendrils and uh, all kinds of things could be happening here. And because it's on the back of a crazy quilt, which already has so much going on, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick with these three main focal points and then let the quilt be the rest of the, you know, what's happening. Um, so just in terms of design, uh, I think I'm just going to keep, I'm, I'm keeping the plant life down to a minimum, right? So I've, I've decided on my placement and now I'm working on this kind of thistly, thistly thing. Um, and I decided I had 
gotten some of this stuff called GIMP, um, which is, it's kind of like a cord almost. Um, let's see here. It's kind of like a cord almost. It's, it's quite thick. I'm using a Milner's needle because it wouldn't go through the eye of any other needle that I had. So I needed that, that large eye. Um, and the problem is, is that, as I mentioned, very dense fabric. And so getting a Milner's needle and getting this cord through this fabric is no easy feat. Um, so I got my, I've got this thing, but I probably going to have to be using my pliers as well. All of these things I learned about through the astonishingly amazing Ariane Zercher if you are, have not been watching. So now I'm just gonna continue on with this. This is what I'm doing right now. If you have not been watching Ariane Zercher, I do encourage you, Z-U-R-C-H-E-R -E um, is her last name. And I forget the name of her channel. I cannot remember, but if you Google Ariane Zercher, Ariane, A-R-I-A-N-E, Zercher, Z-U-R-C-H-E-R. Um, you will learn many amazing things. Um, she's very inspiring. So I'm just going to keep working with this, with this gimp, trying to kind of create this feeling of, um, energy and outward motion. Yeah, I think that that's, this is what I need to be using. Yeah, so this is really, really thick. I mean, once I get it, th this is actually going through fine. It's this that is hard to get through. Um, So this is not the first time I have filmed this because as I mentioned, it took a lot to figure out what needle was gonna work and how I would be able to make this gimp work. So this is like, I have tried several times and what I was talking about before, <laughs> uh, in one of the previous takes, now am I gonna just go across I am, I'm just gonna go across, was um, kind of like self-confidence to try things out. Um, and I was, when I was young and in college, um, and I was 19, I was, de I declared art as my major. Um, not because I was an amazing artist, but um, which I'm not, but just because I loved it and that's what I wanted to do and I just wanted to be, I just wanted to be happy. <laughs> now let's see, how am I going to create, see I'm trying to create this line. So it's pretty long and the gimp isn't just going to curve in the ways I want it to. So what, how am I going to make it so that it kind of takes the shape I want? Am I on the camera? Be on the camera. I want it to do that, but it's not just gonna stay like that. I might have to do a little tacking stitch. Anyway, I started at 19 as an art major because that's just what I wanted to do. Um, but I had all, no self-confidence when I was 19. And um, I had to tell you those crits, they're called crits, these things that you do in um, when you're an art major, whereby everybody puts their art up on the walls and then the whole class and the teacher walk around from piece to piece and, you know, as you might guess from the word crit, <laughs> crit, 
critiques it. And, um, you know, in the 80s, there was no such thing as, no, 90s, early, yeah, no, late 80s was when I was in 19. Um, there was no, there was no Brene Brown. There was no, uh, you know, talk about how do you, um, how do you give feedback in ways that can be heard and can be um, helpful? A crit was a critique, <laughs> as the name implies. Um, and my poor little self could just not handle that. I just didn't have the self-confidence for that. It, it was very hard. So I... I changed majors to something that I was better at. I, I wasn't a good artist. I just wanted to be an artist. I wanted to make art, but I wasn't good at it. <laughs> so, you know, and I did not have the uh, wherewithal to be able to say, I don't care about stuff like that. At 19, you know, you care desperately about everything, right? Everything is huge and a very big deal and very dramatic. So, so I became an English major instead. I'm much better at writing than I am at making art. Uh, so, yeah. What happens as you grow up and maybe as you, you know, as just as you go through life, uh, where you can stop letting that kind of thing stop you from doing what you love, right? Where you can stop letting fear and worry and whatever um, keep you from doing what you love. Um, so I would say that menopause has a lot to do with it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if that's your experience, please definitely make a comment below. <laughs> um, I think menopause had a lot to do with it. Turning 50 um, had a lot to do with it. I remember, uh, I'm going to use some bad language here, so um, just a you know warning to turn down the volume for a moment if you don't want to hear bad language. Um, but I remember when I turned 50, I, I, I walked around all day, literally like I, I felt, I could almost viscerally feel like I had a scroll in my hands. And that if I flicked it and it would just roll out for like a mile. And what it was, was just a list of fucks I didn't give anymore. You know? Um, yeah, so that was really helpful. Um, it was probably in my 40s that I actually started doing art again. I mean, not showing it to anybody, but is when I found out about art journaling and uh, was and also about YouTube <laughs> and was watching um, this whole world of art journaling flourish and, you know, jumping on that bandwagon and, f and discovering this way of making art where um, it wasn't about being perfect or about um, making anything in particular, right? It wasn't about making an end product. It was just about doing something that made you happy. And that was extremely freeing for me, extremely freeing. I mean, I didn't show anybody my stuff. Um, but the whole idea, you know, this whole, the whole um, American culture, and I'd be interested to hear what other people say who are not, who are, if anyone's watching this who is not in America, to hear uh, your thoughts from your particular cultural perspective. But in America, like the whole production and being useful, I mean, we are still so trapped by our Puritan ancestors and the whole concept that you have to be productive and useful and, um, you know, and also commercializing everything. Um, so, oh my gosh, are you good at something? You should do it for a living. You should, um, you should be selling it. 
and I, so I have nothing against selling things that you make or because, because, uh, yeah, then the rest of us who can't make those things get to buy them. So it's, it's not about selling things you make or about selling something you love to do. It's just the instantaneous, can, can I monetize this thing that I love, uh, that can get me down <laughs> about America. Um, and can really stifle creativity, I think, right? So um, this is a workout, I'm telling you. This gimp stuff, I mean, well, this whole quilt is a friggin' workout. This whole piece is a workout. Anyway, anyway, the point being that it wasn't until much later in life so it was probably 10 years of art journaling before I put, before I picked up a needle and thread. Uh, and then a couple of years of just sort of doing it, you know, here and there, like as I was making books or something, just a little added extra before I actually kind of really started concentrating on the fiber arts, which it turns out I just freaking love. I just feel like it's my thing. Not, not to say that I think I'm great at it. I don't mean that. I just mean it feels like my, my place. I feel like I found my space, um, creatively speaking. Um, and I'm 54, which I've mentioned before. So just what, how can we, so uh, what I do on the side, I, I work at a university. That's my day job that pays for these fabulous threads and my rent and food and stuff. That's my day job. But my passion and my side hustle, if you will, um, is as a spiritual companion. Or um, some people know it as a spiritual director. Um, or, yeah spiritual guide maybe, I don't know. But I walk with people on their spiritual path and I help them to walk that path intentionally, um, to uh, dive deeper into it, these kinds of things. And it took me, well, this just is not gonna come through. It took me until I was much older to find that thing um, and to then train for it and um, set up a practice. And it also took me a long time to find this, my happy place. Oof, look at this mess back here. My happy place with, with my creativity. And I'm just wondering how we as a culture can stop wasting so much time. Um, yeah, I'm just wasting so much time. I just, I, I, I just wish that I had, I had gotten to this place so much sooner so that I could be doing it longer and um, so that I had a lot more skill at this point in my life um, and all those things. And also, as a spiritual companion, I, I am also keenly aware that, um, you know, th things happen when they happen. They happen when you are ready for them to happen. Um, I mean, I suspect that I, that this, that, that I, there are, there are, what am I trying to say? I suspect that I was offered opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to become, create, to step into my creativity and to own that part of myself and to love that part of myself, but I wasn't ready, right? I, I, I'd be so curious if I could watch a little film of my life a little instant replay, right? Um, to see how many times I might have been offered some kind of fiber something that I turned away from because I wasn't ready, because I didn't have the 
I just didn't have, I just wasn't, I didn't have the confidence. Um, that kind of thing. So I know that uh, there's just a lot of things in this life that that aren't gonna happy, happen until we're ready for them to happen, until we're ready to step into them. Um, and I think that's true of my work as a, at become, you know, becoming a spiritual companion, spiritual director. Um, it's certainly gotta be true of my creative side, right? I had to, I had to, I had to turn 50. I had to suddenly see the writing on the wall. Hey, you, it turns out, aren't going to live forever. So, like, stop screwing around with your time. And um, what are you waiting for? And who the f hell cares? <laughs> I was about to use a much worse word there. Who the hell cares if you aren't a great artist? That has nothing, not one thing to do with it. Um, so I had to get to that place where I could say those things to myself and mean it and also menopause I guess menopause had to happen <laughs> it's, it's, it's not such a fun process and it's incredibly freeing um, for those of you who haven't tackled menopause yet I'm just going to tell you now it's incredibly freeing um and, uh, yeah, so those things had to happen for me to get to this place. And um, I'm just curious, you know, put in the comments, like, what had to happen for you to, or are you at this place? Have you kind of claimed these freedoms for yourself? Um what freedoms have you claimed for yourself? Um, what, yeah, what, what had to happen for you to get there? So this isn't exactly, am I even on the camera? Jeez, Trace. I don't know how to. These aren't, this isn't exactly the same shape. <laughs> I wish this was a little rounder up here. It's because I didn't get the the uh, fold over as as well as I would have liked so that I could create. I just love the top of this shape here. And this is a little bit too squared off. But it's getting there. I don't know how to do that stem. Or I, I mean, essentially what has to happen is I have to let go of it looking exactly like it does in my drawing. That's what I have to let go of. Um. I mean, this is a drag. But that's pretty cool looking, huh? That is cool looking. And I look forward to trying this gimp on fabric that is slightly more porous. Not <laughs> porous is so not the word. A uh, looser weave. Like I'd like to try it on this linen. I bet, I bet it's much easier on the linen and not having to go through so many layers. Because if you, so if I just, if I just pull it gently, now look at this, I could be even curving this up a little bit See, look, I can, I can, it can be dimensional. Check that out. See how it's, I made it a little bit dimensional by, um, by pulling it and shaping it. All right. Uh, 
Um, yeah. So I have wanted, if you've watched any of my past videos, I have wanted to, um, one of my past videos is of this piece that I tried from, uh, that I was inspired by a book called Expressive Stitches. Um, and so it's a piece that I did inspired by the March block. No, that's not right. January block, which was um, hair and lace, I think it was. And so I did, I did my first block and then I had extra time and so I did a second block that was inspired by the book Expressive Stitches by Jan Daw Dawson. Dawson, maybe. I'm not sure exactly how you say her name. And um, I've really been wanting to try another piece in that. I loved that piece so much. And um, I've been wanting to try another piece in that style um, with some gorgeous pink wool that I got at um, a library sale or a sale at the library on Cape Cod where I was visiting a friend and um, I've really been wanting to and I dyed some of it uh, like da Dawson does in her book and uh, yeah so I've really been wanting to try that and I was hoping to get to it <laughs> this month but um, this piece has taken over my life. Uh, so I hope to get to that next. I think that needs one more. I can't even get it through here because there's probably just so much gimp on the other side. I can't even, yeah, there's so much gimp on the other side, I can't even get it through. Ay, ay vey, as we say on Long Island, which is where I grew up. Ay vey. So I had thought I might make the stem out of this gimp, but oh my God, this is not, not a pleasurable thing. It looks great, but it is not a pleasurable thing with this dense. With this dense fabric, what do I want to happen here? I kind of want it to go like that. I might have to tack it a little. And it would still feel, would it feel empty up there still? Look at that, that's cool. That is cool. Am I gonna attack it or I'm just gonna leave it 3D? I'm just gonna leave it 3D, I think. At what moment, now here's Here's a question, right? At what moment do you just say, that's it, stop now, stop now, right? You know, you know when you're watching YouTube and you're like yelling at the screen, stop now, stop. This is the moment to stop. Maybe this is the moment to stop. Let's say this is, I still, it just feels a little bit empty up here, but I feel like this is the moment to stop. So. I'm going to stop. And I'm going to think about how I'm going to do the 
Oh gosh, how am I even gonna tie this off? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure that out later. I'm not gonna make you watch me try to figure out how to tie that off. So I think so. I'm gonna I have to need to figure out how to do the stem. Let's zoom back out. Need to figure out how to do the stem. I need to put on my other two guys here, and I feel like these buttons need to find a home on here. Doesn't this just seem like such a crazy quilt kind of a kind of a button? Should they go down there? Eh, I don't really like that. But maybe across here. Just two. Maybe three down here. Buttons seem like such a crazy quilt kind of thing. Well, these buttons might find a home. Ooh, and look at this one, this pear button. Should that go somewhere? Or these guys? Probably can't see that very well. Maybe these guys. They kind of bring that around, don't they? If we want to move that color around, oh, but that's pink. Maybe they go over here. Just kind of bringing that color around into the rest of the quilts. How many of those do I have? Do I have one more? And then Those guys are pretty good too. All right, who's screaming, no, no, don't do it. All right, well, I'm gonna continue on with this stem. I'll see if I do it with GIMP or not. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you're having a great time with the stitching. And uh, see you soon.